Hello students, hope you all are fine and doing well and also doing your assignment and listening to the online teachings carefully. Well, in our last unit, chapter 6, the third phase of the national movement, Mahatma Gandhiji, we saw the three major incidents which led Gandhiji to launch the non-cooperation movement. Under that, we saw the Rowlett Act, which was passed by Justice Sidney Rowlett in the year 1919, and uh, Jalanwala Bagh massacre, which took place in 1919, April 13th, followed by Khilafat moment. And we also saw the objectives, which were, were for the non-cooperation movement, the programs and the activities followed in the non-cooperation movement. And today, we shall continue with the same lesson, Unit 2, Chapter 6. We shall do the factors that led Gandhiji to start off the civil disobedient movement. The first national movement mobilized public support to win freedom for India. It was, of course, a great step, though it was short-lived. So which moment are we talking about? It is none other than the non-cooperation moment, which started in the year 1920 and concluded by 1922. So it was short-lived. Now, why did Gandhiji call off the non-cooperation moment? Because of the Chauri Chaura incident, which took place, where Gandhiji wanted non-violence, but... The violence was involved, so he had to call off or withdraw the non-cooperation movement. So the second national movement which Gandhiji launched is the civil disobedient movement, the Great Historic March or it is also called as the Dandani March. Now Mahatma Gandhiji gave a call for civil disobedient movement in the year 1930, 1930. The moment was different from non-cooperation moment. So now we need to see what do you mean by the civil disobedient moment and non-cooperation moment. Well, non-cooperation moment was not to cooperate with the British government. While the civil disobedient moment, it was a mass participation, the word civil itself says. So the civilians disobeyed the British government. By paralyzing the administration and breaking some of the specific rules and regulations. Here you have to understand and these are the key words. Okay, the civil disobedient moment was an attempt to paralyze the administration by breaking some specific rules and regulation. So let's learn the factors responsible for Gandhiji to call for the civil disobedient moment. I'm sure you can understand my drawing on the board. It is Simon Commission, the people of India all gather together and asking Simon to go back. And uh, as we, and that is a black flag. Okay, this is black flag. And there was a lot of hartals and demonstration. So let's learn the Simon Commission in detail. So, students, listen very carefully. In 1927, the British government appointed the Indian Statutory Commission, popularly known as the Sir Simon Commission, under the leader Sir John Simon, to investigate the need for further constitutional reforms. So, why was the Simon Commission appointed? To look into the constitutional reforms. This commission was boycotted by the Indians because there was no Indians in the Simon Commission, which was appointed to assist the working of the Act of 1919 in India. So why was it appointed? It was appointed to look into the constitutional reforms and to look into the working of the Act of 1919 in India to assist this particular Act. It composed only of seven British members of the parliament. So there were no Indians at all. So what's the big deal of them coming to India without in any Indians in the commission and finally looking into 
the 1919 act and to assess it so it composed of only seven british members of the parliament this was seen as a violation of the principle of self determination and a deliberate insult to the self respect of the indians so it was seen as a violation of the principle of what self determination and it was a deliberate insult to the self respect of the indians so in 1927 the madras session which was presided by dr ansari the national congress decided to boycott the simon commission at every stage and in every form now this was in madras session in the year 1927 which was led by dr ansari the muslim league and the hindu mahasabha decided to support the congress decision at least this was a temporary one in order to unite the parties together so it united the muslims and the hindus and all the other parties joined together in order to go against the simon commission where no indians were involved in this commission on february 3rd the day the commission reached bombay so when did the commission reach bombay february 3rd which year 1927 and all india hartals was organized wherever the commission went it was greeted with black flags hartals and the slogan in the air, uh, air was go back simon or simon go back as you see it on the board the garment used which garment the british garment used brutal suppression and police attacks to break the popular discontent or the opposition which was put forward by the indians so what was the main thing why did the indians dislike the simon commission because the simon commission did not have any indians but it had only seven britishers in the commission well now we had learned about uh, in the last unit in the lesson the radicals the second phase of the national movement a radical one was assaulted receiving lathi blows and later died during this particular simon commission can you name him yes he is none other than lala lajpat rai the next reason for gandhi to launch the civil disobedience movement is the declaration of purna swaraj the calcutta session of congress had served an ultimatum to the british government to accept the nehru's report by the end of 1929 or to face a mass movement so the calcutta session of congress asked the british government if you are not going to accept nehru's report so you have to face the mass movement since the one year time limit set a calcutta session passed without any positive response from the british government the nehru report was declared lapsed at lahore session of 1929 it passed a resolution demanding purna swaraj or complete independence now this spelling of purna swaraj can be written as p u r n a or p w o r n a both the spellings are correct now students you can recall the significance of 26 january which you have learned in your 9th standard the civics lesson it was called as a red letter day that's what you all learned about it and the great significant of it now let us see what happened on the midnight of december 31st 1929 pandit nehru led the procession to the banks of river ravi i can you can see it here so pandit nehru leading the people are following to the banks of river ravi at lahore 
and hoisted the tricolor flag and proclaimed that it was a crime against man and god to submit any longer to the british rule the congress working committee met in january 1930 and decided the following so what did the people do they followed pandit nehru to the banks of river ravi and hoisted the tricolor flag on 26 january 1930 so from that year every 26 january was considered as the independence day and uh, here the people standing here some of them are saying jai bharat and some of them saluting and saying ma to jai salam so what was a preparation for this the congress working committee which met in the year 1930 they decided to follow these programs preparation for the civil disobedient movement purna swaraj was set as a goal and 26 january to observed as purna swaraj day all over the country and with hoisting the tricolor flag resignation members from the legislature and withdrawal from all possible association with british government so let's take a quick recap of the declaration of purna swaraj so what did the congress serve as an ultimatum to the british they said they had to accept the nehru's report by the end of 1929 or to face a mass movement now what did they declare they wanted purna swaraj or complete independence so which session did they ask this the lahore session so what happened on the midnight of december 31st 1929 pandit nehru led the procession onto the banks of river ravi and hoisted the tricolor flag and what were the programs which were arranged during this particular time so the uh, programs were preparation for a civil disobedient movement so they set purna swaraj as a goal and every 26 january was observed as purna swaraj day by hoisting the tricolor flag and uh, the members from the legislature resigned and there was withdrawal from all possible association which was associated with the british government